deriving from Bolivar's integrationist thinking, emerged from his famous Jamaica letter written in September 1815. Firstly, is the hemispheric scope of integration. And I quote it. It is a grandiose idea to think of cons consolidating the new world into a single nation, united by packs into a single bond. This visionary conception transcends, go beyond, goes beyond the national liberation concept, where a single nation frees itself from external control and domination by a single colonizer, for example, Venezuela from Spain, to encompass the entire hemisphere, what he calls the new world, including the freedom of all colonies from all colonizers. The second dimension in Bolivar's thinking specifically addresses the Caribbean, and he asks the question, the islands of Puerto Rico and Cuba are not the people of those islands Americans? Are they not maltreated? Do they not deserve a better life? To Bolivar, all Caribbean islands, be they Jamaica, where he was in exile and saw misery, or Haiti, which provided troops and ships for the continuation of the independence war, and which later interested in, in 1893, was the departure point for Jose Marti and his Cuban revolutionaries. Or St. Lucia, which provided Jean-Baptiste Bidot, who fought with Bolivar. He saw them, these islands were equally part of the hemispheric American nation that he dreamed about. The St. Lucia and Bidot of the Anglophone Caribbean, because when this took place, St. Lucia, which was previously French, was in British hands, is the representative embodiment of Bolivar's integrationist thought. As the Venezuelan ambassador to St. Lucia, Lee Escalona, noted, and I quote her, Jean-Baptiste Bidot is much more than a brave soldier who fought for the cause of the independence of Venezuela and South America, who departed from Haiti to Venezuela in search of Venezuela's freedom. And in July 1816, and I want this really to be expanded because many people don't know this. In July 1816, in the central coast of Venezuela, Ocumare de la Costa, Bido, the St. Lucian, returned alone on a boat to rescue Bolivar and save him from certain death at the hands of the enemy army. So the ambassador, the Venezuelan ambassador to St. Lucia says that Bido is a solid bridge that interweaves the story between Venezuela and St. Lucia between South America and the Caribbean. Chavez, his political emergence 160 years after Bolivar's death, placed him in circumstances pointedly different from Bolivar's circumstances even though elements of Bolivar's thinking retained relevance in the contemporary period. While Bolivar was situated in an emergent embryonic capitalism, capitalism now coming out of a feudal stage, Chavez's context was one of an imperialist capitalism. And Lenin reminds us that imperialism is capitalism at a certain stage. A student of Bolivar's writing, Chavez named his political party the Bolivarian Revolutionary Movement 200, MBR 200, in tribute to the liberator Bolivar. Venezuela's revised constitution, 1999, a process which Chavez himself led, notes and I quote the historic example of the, our liberator Simon Bolivar. It is based on the doctrine of Simon Bolivar and strengthens Latin American integration in accordance with the principle of non-intervention and national self-determination of the people. In the context of imperialist capitalism, Chavez dedicated himself to strengthening existing integrationist mechanisms and processes and to establishing new ones. 
His work was practical manifestation in a contemporary context of the integrationist thought of Bolivar. His new integrationist mechanisms included Alba, Selak, Petro Caribe, Petro Sur, Sucre, Telesur. Now, <clears throat> integration is synonymous with unification. And it is an understanding displayed both by Bolivar and Chavez, who in their praxis gave meaning to the concept of unity and unity in diversity. Integration, therefore, does not have to be monolithic, rigid, mechanistic. But instead, it can be dialectical as implied in the concept of unity and diversity. In short, while the essence of unity may be around shared values, the forms of unity may be diverse. Sig significantly, the integrationist thinking of Bolivar and Chavez was liberatory and emancipatory. The question that Bolivar asked, are they not maltreated? Do they not deserve a better life? So integration and freedom, whether from colonial bondage or capitalist wage slavery, shared an inseparability in the thinking of Bolivar and Chavez. The wounded, uh, as Franz Fanon said, Le Dame de la Terre, the condemned people, the wretched of the earth, must be integrated, not simply into a new world, but into a new life, a better world. The logic of integration as freedom is internationalism. For Bolivar to integrate countries and peoples into a hemispheric nation, they must first be liberated, requiring internationalist, internationalist action, which is an altruistic commitment putting lives on the line. For Chavez, operating in a different context, more contemporary, that meant putting national resources, that is Venezuelan resources, economic, financial, diplomatic, political, <clears throat> to the service of others. And in this, he did the call from Comandante Fidel, when he said, being internationalist is a way of paying our debt to humanity, Fidel. I go on now to consolidation in times of pandemic. <clears throat> <clears throat> Amidst the minutiae of the global reportage on the coronavirus, landscapes and pathways are discernible. The socialist and socialist oriented nations have been characterized by the generally humanist approach of their progressive administrations. Firstly, like other countries, their health systems have been impacted in an unprecedented way, but they have, by and large, risen to the challenge, aided by pre-existing services and policies which they themselves have self-critically self conformed. Secondly, these socialist and socialist oriented nations have in the framework of their resources remained loyal to their internationalist commitment, sharing experiences, giving advice, sharing medical supplies, equipment, etc. Thus, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, despite capitalist aggression, threats, blockades, siege of assets, the military, the method military assault, Venezuela has provided tangible support to the anti-coronavirus struggle. Cuba, similarly, as we heard yesterday from the Ambassador Ventura, has dispensed much needed aid worldwide. Both Venezuela and Cuba have supplied pandemic assistance to St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the international spirit of Bolivar and Chavez. The viral body blow to global capitalism has hurt it, but it has not mortally wounded it. Note the continued sanctions, the blockades, invasions, attacks against socialism, even in times of pandemic, by capitalism. 
Workers, not only those on the front line, the medical personnel, but workers generally are bearing the brunt of the viral attack, as are certain categories in the United States that talk about the imbalance with concerns with non-whites and poor people. So particularly vulnerable people are subject to the viral attack, reflecting the class nature of capitalist society. But even in those societies, new voices and new roles of old voices are in evidence in protest. Trade unions, form, formerly quiescent ones, those that were sleeping like, are agitating. Activists have found new energies. Liberals are sounding progressive, even almost revolutionary. That a new global situation has arisen with national and the local particularity, there is no doubt. It is therefore incumbent on all progressives, progressives with the small p and progressives with the big p. The small p ones are those who do good things even that keep capitalism. The ones, those with the big p are those who want to change from capitalism to socialism like myself. So it's incumbent on us to assess the new opportunities for struggle against capitalism for a better world. A non-return, a non-return to normality. Or put differently, for a new normal, but one that is more egalitarian than the one before coronavirus. This historic moment should give impetus to a five-dimensional program that links local, national, regional, hemispheric, and global. And that program should corral, should harness people, coalesce them, put them into a tighter bond, and consolidate them, cement them together. For example, the inadequacies of the capitalist health systems laid bare by the virus can give rise to a campaign for state-run free medical care for all. So in these times of crisis, we see people working overtime. The capitalists drug the factories and so they're going around the clock. We also cannot sleep. The progressives cannot sleep. We have to work even harder. The Sao Paulo Forum Working Group has put out a statement. They have a very wonderful document. And the Latin American consensus, this one, this particular one said, and I quote, at every level, we are continuing to struggle for power within all the institutions and to harness it to serve the alternative project, that is to create a new order, new society, socialism, improving the coordination between forces in all forms of power existing in society. Taking account of specific conditions in each country, the entire continent should share, which is something we do now, and intensify the events manifesting our struggle, which is coming out of this convention. We of the progressive and left-wing political parties are keeping up the fight against the system. In this struggle, we are advancing shoulder to shoulder with the social movements of every kind. Despite temporary setbacks and the aggressiveness of today's capitalism, our fight for power, because that's the bottom line, progressives want power in the interest of workers and poor people. Our fight for power is undeterred. I close with a song that is made popular by Mama of the Mamas and Papas in the United States and the progressive activist singer Nina Simone. A new world. There's a new world coming and it's just around the bend. There's a new world coming this one is coming to an end. There's a new voice, a new voice calling. You can hear it if you try. And it's growing stronger with each day that passes by. There's a brand new morning, rising clear and sweet and free. There's a new day dawning that belongs to you and me. Yes, a new world's coming. The one we have had visions of, coming in peace, coming in joy, coming in love. Thank you. Thank you very much.
very much our